I, I hate to say like entry level robot vacuum because you know I couldn't make a robot vacuum. <laughs> And, and the technology and the smarts that they've put in this thing and compared to a lot of the, the lesser competitors, I would say, that are out there, this thing is very, very unique. It has an oversized catch basin. This one actually even has mopping capability. So that's something that comes with the pet one. It has a dedicated mopping pad and a pet hair removing um, insert that you put in instead of the roller, actually. You put it over that and that will do this it's also incredibly small that's both good and bad i can tell you <laughs> i've had some issues because this the comparative to all of the other robot vacuums the height on this thing is so small it's getting into places that i kind of hadn't kid proofed yet so this is what i was talking about with that uh, pet hair remover and i have not installed this or used it but you put this in place of the roller and it draws that suction right through here and it's really, really aggressive at picking up pet hair. So you can hopefully see that right here. So that goes on the bottom of the unit and replaces the roller so you can pick up pet hair. So if you're one of those uh, families that has a pet and you don't want to, or you should admit that maybe <laughs> there's a, some hair around, this is the other thing that it's got. And this is a mopping attachment. So when we pull this open here, you fill this whole thing with water. And every 20 minutes they say fill it with water, but this goes on the bottom of the unit and it actually has these mopping pads here that can actually go through and mop. There's 10 pads included. I have not used any of the mopping pads just to keep them fresh. This one's kind of a two-tone. So you can see it has that lifting lid there. It's almost a metallic brushed finish on the top. It looks phenomenal. When they ship, they're going to come with that white ring around the front here. And that's to keep the bumper from you know getting dislodged or, or hurt. Um, take that out real quick. This is the catch basin on this thing, and it is enormous. So it's got one of the largest catch basins. This is it going around. I, I think my house is like a torture test for robot vacuums. You know, it's got that slick floor, which is always tough on them. Um, a lot of times it's easier to think for them to go through carpet than it is on some of the stuff that I've put out there. But you'll notice in, in that situation, it just went down and randomly stopped <laughs> turned i noticed that there's uh some firmware updates and i did the firmware updates after filming this part and it definitely did get better and so there's always improvements on it as far as firmware goes firmware is the software that's inside your vacuum so these vacuum cleaners they've been releasing firmware every three months and that's something i love to see from a company is that they're not just you know build it sell it forget it and never apply it look how close it's going to those walls so it doesn't have laser range finding. It doesn't have all this other super fancy stuff, but it's following the outside corners and it's getting into super tight spaces. And while it's doing that, it's actually building a map that you can watch on the app on the phone, which is pretty slick. Uh, it is very compact. This is the other thing. It's, I think, 3.34 inches, which is lower than most toe kicks or like 3.75 inches. So this is a toe kick. It's going to go underneath the toe kick. It's going to pick up that garbage. It's going to go sideways and it's going to keep going. So uh, it has some really cool features. That said, because it is so short, it's actually caused other more unique problems here, as you see. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of doing its bump and run here. Um, but it's had a tendency to get stuck. You know, I'll, I'll be completely transparent with you. I usually pick up all of these chairs for every robot vacuum, but I wanted to see if it would navigate. The Lucy was able to navigate obstacles like this. This thing is getting stuck. And what happens is once it does that, it loses that, that inertial navigation that it's using. And so you'll see in the, some of the future mapping stuff that that can really throw it off. So it kind of had to restart over once I ran into those situations, but I want to be fully transparent with you. This one was kind of my bad. <laughs> this is when it attacked the dishwasher. You know, they were fighting each other. They, they, one's chrome and more stainless and one's brighter. So it got a little mad at the dishwasher and it just sat there kind of pounding on that. Uh, it, there was a piece of the dishwasher that comes down and I didn't have that tucked in quite right. And it's soft. So when the bumper came up to it, it hadn't, hadn't pushed the bumper all the way in, but then the top hit. So yeah, you can see it's just still spinning away there. Uh, no fun for it as well, but yeah, you know, that, that one's got stuck, but I did want to point out how fast this thing is. It literally starts to do like almost a wheelie when it does its corners. You'll see it kind of bump sometimes and just kind of jerk. I think they could actually tune it down a little bit in that next firmware 
because you can see as, as soon as it hits with that bumper, it just keeps moving. And a lot of other robot vacuums get confused. They take a while. So whatever processor they have in this thing is fast because it decides to go and it goes. It doesn't, doesn't mess around and make you wait at all. In the end, this thing is so quick that it finished in about the same amount of time as the one that had the real, um, you know, advanced navigation on board with the lasers and stuff, but it's just bumping its way and, you know, finding the areas that it hasn't got to yet. So.